Good morning. We welcome you to the Lomax AME Zion Church on this December 24th, this Christmas Eve, as we prepare to celebrate once again the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. If, if you've come to worship him on today, won't you give him a hand clap of praise? welcome those who are in the sanctuary as well as those who are joining us virtually as we enter into this service in a spirit of worship. And so we would ask you would now stand for our call to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace. For the throne of David and his kingdom, he will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen. amen. You may be seated for the invocation. Lord God, we come this morning thanking you once again for another day to worship you. God, we know that we've been scurrying about all week long. We've been making lists and checking them twice. We've been going to the mall and to the grocery store and we've been wrapping gifts and baking food and cooking food. But God, we wanna put all of that out of our minds right now. For we have come to worship you in spirit and in truth. We've come once again, God, to lift up your holy name. So God, have your way in this worship service. Allow us to focus on the birth of Jesus Christ and the second coming that has been promised. So God, touch this service. Touch all of those who've come to worship, whether in person or virtually. Be with the music ministry this morning. Be with the preachers who would lead us in worship. Be with the ushers at the door and the media team. Let everyone feel the presence of your Holy Spirit in this place. And when it's all said and done, we will give your name the highest praise, which is hallelujah. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Would you stand as we sing our hymn of praise this morning? O come all ye faithful.
Church. Apostolic and universal, which now let us reverently and sincerely declare by use of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please turn with me to our Old Testament scripture lesson, which is taken from Psalm 89. I'll be reading in your hearing verses 1 through 14, I mean 1 through 4 and 19 through 26. And for those who don't have your Bibles with you, you can read along with me from the monitor. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever with my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all verses 19 through 20 to all generations verses 19 through 26 then you spoke in a vision to your faithful one and said i have set the crown on one who is mighty i have exalted one chosen from the people i have found my servant david with my holy oil i have anointed him my hand shall always remain with him. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him. The wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love shall be with him. And in my name, his horn shall be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. Recite the, the final verse with me all together. He shall cry to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. This is the word of God for the people of God. We are blessed through reading, hearing, and applying his holy word. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Our New Testament scripture lesson this morning is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, and we will be reading verses 26 through 38. Luke chapter 1, beginning with verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative is Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Although today is Christmas Eve, liturgically it's also the fourth Sunday in Advent. And so we will have one of our young adults, two of our young adults come forward to do our Advent reading as they have been doing all month long. We'll have um, Adrian III and Colin come to give us our Advent reading, which will be followed by our prayer hymn and the pastoral prayer. Today is the fourth Sunday in Advent, but it is also Christmas Eve. For four weeks we have been waiting for Christ, Christmas to arrive, and now Christmas is almost here. Are you tired of waiting to celebrate Christmas, or have you been celebrating Christmas since the day after Thanksgiving? Our season of waiting for the Messiah pales in comparison to the weight of those who lived before the Messiah came in flesh. 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 1-11 through 11 and 16 seems like an odd Old Testament text for the fourth Sunday in Advent. It focuses upon the prophet Nathan's message from the Lord that God would establish an eternal throne through David. However, it is not an odd text since it focuses on the eternal nature of David's throne, which would be fulfilled by the coming of Jesus Christ. The wait from David to Jesus was worth it as God established an eternal throne, one from which we are still benefiting, even in 2023. Most things of value are worth the wait. On, the, on this fourth Sunday in Advent, our New Testament text is found in Luke, the first chapter, verses 26 through 38, and verses 46b through 55. Those verses focus on Mary and consist of the Annunciation and the Magnificat. The announcement of Mary's pregnancy, beginning in verse 26, is a wonderful account that involves Mary, a young woman, an angel, and messages that had to be unbelievable. Great things are foretold about this Messiah for whom the Jewish people in the world have been waiting for many millennia. As we draw near to the end of of wait, we find Mary, who will have to wait during the nine to 10 months of her pregnancy for this special child to be born. With the Magnificat, there is the joy that anticipates the great things that God can do in the lives of God's humble servants from generation to generation. Again, the coming of the Messiah will be worth the wait. What an Advent journey it has been. What a weight we have experienced. We have reflected upon the hope, love, and joy associated with Jesus, with Jesus, the coming of Christ. Today, we focus on the peace that we can experience, even as we wait for Jesus to show up and show out in our lives and the world. Knowing that Christ is on the way and that Jesus is coming can provide us a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so today, we relight the hope love, and joy candles, and we relight the peace candle as we reflect on God's peace that is available to us each day in our lives. Well, we've made it through Advent, and it was certainly worth the wait.
was meant to be with God as our Father. Brothers, all are we. Let me walk with my brother in a perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be And let it be
Lord, we surely feel your presence in this place. Sometimes, God, your goodness is overwhelming. When we think about what you did for us, that you were God all by yourself, and you decided to put on human flesh and come and walk in a sin-filled world. God, we've come to praise you and thank you for being such a good God. For God, we don't know where we would be without you. We come thanking you, God, for your love that is available if we would just show it from heart to heart and from breast to breast. We thank you, God, for your peace that is available if man and woman would just stop fighting with each other all around the world. We come thanking you, God, for joy that the world didn't give and the world cannot take away. And we come thanking you, God, first and foremost for hope. For God, when you got up on the third day, we have hope in every situation. So God, we've come thanking you that we have hope even though the funds may be low. We have hope even though the doctor's report is not good. We have hope even though there's strife around us. We have hope, God, in every situation, and it's all because of you, God. God, we know that we've come to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. But God, we're reminded that you are not just a babe in a manger, but you are a powerful king who still sits on the throne with all power in your hand. And so, God, we're walking like the people who have come out of darkness into your great light. We're walking like you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're walking like the government rests upon your shoulders. We're walking like this is your kingdom, God. God, we thank you. Because if it was only the world, God, we don't know what we would do. So God, in this worship service, we pray that you would touch someone who's broken. Someone, God, who's grieving. Someone, God, who's lost. Someone, God, who's hurt. Someone, God, who's angry. Someone, God, who needs a healing touch. Someone who doesn't even know their own self-worth. God, we pray that you would come and have your way in this service so that when we've left this place, we'll go out like the children of God that you came to make us. We'll go out and everywhere we walk, people will see light. We'll go out and lives will be changed, God. And people will want to know, what must I do to be saved? So God, continue to have your way in this service. But more importantly, God, have your way in us. And when it's all said and done, God, we'll give your name the highest praise. We love you, God, and we praise you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Let the people of God say, amen.
time is it, Lomax? Oh, I didn't hear that. What time is it, Lomax? Yes, 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 this is our chance. This is our opportunity to give back to God. Just a portion of what he gives to us all the time and every day and every moment of every hour. Each one of us in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7, it says each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. In Psalms 96, 7 through 9, it says, Ascribe to the Lord the glory that is due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. As the ushers come forward, give your gifts and be glad. And hear the angels sing Glory, glory, glory I said glory, glory, glory Glory, 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 glory To the new born King Amen, let us pray Our Father and our God we thank you, Lord God, for the gifts that have been given, Lord God. We ask that you amplify it and magnify it, Lord God, so that it might be used for the building of thy kingdom. This is your servant's humble prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
source of your strength this morning? Is he the one who is your bridge over troubled waters? Is he food in a weary land? Is he rock when there is no one in your corner? Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Would you all pray with me this morning? Lord, we thank you for your spirit in this place. We thank you for your spirit in your people. We pray now, God, that you would come with power and conviction, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable unto thee. For, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Let us all say amen. Do you like getting gifts? For sure, tomorrow, but maybe even tonight. Most of us will be unwrapping and opening gifts. Part of the human wonder of Christmas is wondering what gifts are covered in wrapping paper. Some have had gifts under the tree for a couple of weeks. Others may have just put the gifts under the tree last night. Some still have some gifts to wrap and to put under the tree. No matter when you put your gifts under the tree, a part of the excitement of Christmas from a human fleshly standpoint is anticipating what is in the beautifully wrapped gift boxes. Imagine if we bought people's gifts, didn't wrap them, and came and put them under the tree without wrapping them in wrapping paper. The anticipation of what is in the gift box would not be there. It wouldn't be as exciting. It is this reason that some people, including at least one or two that I know, really enjoy unwrapping a gift. You know how you have that person in your family who takes a long time to slowly pull the paper off of the gift? And they usually do that if they only have one gift under the tree. They're going to savor it and make it last as long as they can. Well, over the past few weeks, we've been anticipating the one gift that really matters at Christmas, and that is the gift of Jesus Christ. Over the last few weeks, we've been waiting for Jesus to be born anew in our hearts, in our lives, and in our world on Christmas Day. And so during our sermon series on waiting, we considered that God is working while we are waiting, that God will use you and use your waiting time, and that waiting on God is also waiting with God. But what have we been waiting for? Each of us may have a different thing for which we've been waiting during this waiting season of ours. However, during Advent, there is one thing for which we have all been waiting, and that is for Jesus to be born again and anew in our hearts. Jesus is the one for whom we've been waiting. And so just for a few minutes, since I'm interrupting the musical concert that's going on, I'm going to be brief this morning with a meditation entitled, The One for Whom You've Been Waiting. From the beginning and in the beginning, Jesus is the one for whom we've been waiting. In the garden, there was Adam and there was Eve and there was God. Oh, and there was also a serpent. And because Adam and Eve allowed the serpent to tempt them into being disobedient, the world would need the one for whom we've been waiting, even from the beginning. First prophecy that is found in scripture can be found in Genesis 3.15. There, in response to the serpent's deception of Adam and Eve, God said, And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. It is in these words that we believe that the first prophecy about the one we've been waiting for can be found. The words of Genesis 
17, foreshadow a struggle that would exist between the serpent and humans. But the ultimate victory would belong to the one who was Eve's offspring and his name is Jesus. Jesus is the one for whom we've been waiting. For we need him to offer himself, not as a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger, but as a living sacrifice on the cross. And we would need him to, to be raised from the dead on the third day so that we might have eternal life. From the beginning, Jesus is the one for whom we've been waiting for. Go back to Genesis 12 and Genesis 22. We find there that God through Adam pointed to the one for whom we've been waiting. God promised that through Abraham's offspring, all the nations of the world would be blessed. This would happen through Jesus, the one we've been waiting for. In Numbers 24, 17, Balaam prophesied, I see him, but not now. I look at him, but not nearby. A star comes from Jacob. A scepter arises from Israel. Scripture foretold that the one for whom we've been waiting would come from the line of Jacob, and that one is Jesus. The prophet Isaiah Isaiah saw the one for whom we've been waiting. He saw that he would come from Jesse. He said a shoot will grow up from the stump of Jesse. A branch will sprout from his roots. The one that we've been waiting for, Jesus, is an offshoot of Jesse, who was the father of David. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied about the coming of the one who we've been waiting for. Jeremiah in Jeremiah 23, 5 and 6 said, the time is coming, declares the Lord, when I I will raise up a righteous descendant from David's line and he will rule as a wise king he will do what is just and right in the land Jesus is the righteous descendant from the line of David from whom we've been waiting the prophet Micah foretold the one who we've been waiting on he said that as for you Bethlehem Though you are the least significant of Judah's forces, one who is to be the ruler in Israel on my behalf will come from you. His origin is from remote times, from ancient of days. Jesus is the one from Bethlehem for whom we've been waiting. Isaiah prophesied again that Jesus would be born from a young woman or a virgin. Isaiah 7.14 declares, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin is with child and shall bear a son and shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Isaiah went on in Isaiah 9 to say that the one that we've been waiting for, that the government would be upon his shoulders. For unto us a child is born, a son is given, authority will rest on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow and grow and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this Jesus is the one for whom we've been waiting for even Psalm speaks about the one we've been waiting for Psalm 72 says that all kings will need to fall down before Jesus and all nations will give him service why because in Psalm 72 they foresaw that the one that we've been waiting for will deliver the needy when they call on him will deliver the poor and will be a helper this one for whom we've been waiting for will have pity on the weak and the needy and will save the lives of those who stand in need the one that we've been waiting for will redeem those who are oppressed and those who are victims of violence Jeremiah kept looking and he saw the one for whom we've been waiting for and he said that a king by the name of Herod would come and and he would try to wipe out this king that we've been waiting for and he would have to take refuge in Egypt that's the one for whom we've been waiting in terms of the the one that we've been waiting for the scriptures didn't just prophesy about him coming but they also prophesied about his life second Samuel 7 says that the the one for whom we've been waiting for would have an eternal kingdom I, I know 
know that we live in the world right now, but there's an eternal kingdom that we have to see with our eyes that are spiritualized. And it said that the one that we've been waiting for would have an eternal kingdom. Isaiah in Isaiah 40 also saw the one from whom we've been waiting for. And he said that before he comes, there will be one who will cry out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. His name was John the Baptist. He came proclaiming that every one of us needs to repent before Jesus comes. Not only did Isaiah say that, but Isaiah went on to say that Jesus would have a ministry in Galilee. Go back and read Isaiah 9. And then in Isaiah 42, the one whom we've been waiting for would come with a message of salvation, not just for the Jews, but for the Gentiles. That means he came for you and for me. Isaiah kept on looking. In Isaiah 53, he prophesied about the one we've been waiting for. He said he would be despised. He'd be rejected by others. A man suffering and acquainted with grief. But not only that, Isaiah in Isaiah 61 prophesied that the one that we've been waiting for would be anointed with the Spirit, that the Spirit of the Lord would rest upon him to bring good news to the oppressed. Anybody oppressed this morning? To bind up the brokenhearted? Anybody had your heart broken? To proclaim liberty to the captives, release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I don't know about you, but I want to live in the Lord's favor. I want to rest in the Lord's favor. That that he would exchange our mourning clothes for a garland of praise. That he would come and he would do this for us. This is the one for whom we've been waiting. Well, well, we're not done because Zechariah also saw him coming. Zechariah said that the one for whom we've been waiting would be betrayed by 30 pieces of silver. But that's not all scripture had to say about the one for whom we've been waiting. Even though we've been waiting to, to worship a babe in the manger, the one that we've been waiting for wasn't born just to be a babe in a manger but he was born to die on a cross for you and for me and so Exodus saw way back in Exodus 12 that Jesus would be our Passover lamb he also foresaw that the one for whom we would be breaking would not even have his bones broken when he was on the cross Leviticus 17 saw that the one for whom we've been waiting would die and pour out his blood for the atonement of sin in Psalm 22 saw the day that he would be on the cross and it said that the one for whom we've been waiting for he would be forsaken my God my God why have you forsaken me that he would be mocked scorned by others and despised that he would experience thirst from the cross his mouth would be dry and it would stick to the roof of his mouth and it, they would cast lots for his clothing like they did from the cross this is the one for whom whom we've been waiting for and so as I prepare to take my seat I know that you want to worship a baby who's in a manger but I stopped by to tell you today that the one that we've been waiting for is not in the manger the one that we've been waiting for is on the throne he has all power in his hands he's come so that you might have victory in every situation Mary put it this way in the Magnificat for the one whom I've been waiting has done great things for me his name is holy his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation he has shown strength in his arm he has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts he brought down those who think they're powerful and he's lifted up the lowly he's filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty he's helped Israel and he'll help us. Yeah. He's come so that we might experience his kingdom forever. This is the one for whom we've been waiting for. An angel said to Mary, he will be great and he will be called the son of the most high and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. This is the one for whom we've been waiting for. Oh, come. Oh, come, Emmanuel. But there's one thing that I got to say before I leave. You might have been waiting for him, but I stopped by to tell somebody that he's been waiting for you. He's been waiting for you to show up and find him, perhaps in a manger. Perhaps you'll find him by the rivers of the Jordan. Perhaps you'll find him hanging from a cross. Perhaps you'll find him at the empty tomb.
room. Perhaps you'll find them in a song that's been sung. Perhaps you'll find them in your own prayer closet. But I stopped by to tell you today that you can't celebrate Jesus if you haven't found him. Jesus is the one that we've been waiting for. And he has been waiting for you. Won't you pray with me? God, we didn't come to do this thing out of form or fashion. We came, God, that someone on this Christmas day who thought they were coming into this place just to hear the songs of the day and do the traditional things of Christmas, that they might have an encounter with you, God, the one for whom they really have been waiting and don't know it. So God, if there's somebody under the sound of my voice today who doesn't know you, someone who hasn't declared that you are the Lord of Lords and you are the King of Kings, that you came to die just for them and to get up so that they might have eternal life. It's my prayer, God, that this day, that they would receive the best gift that ever came. It wasn't wrapped in beautiful paper, but it was wrapped in human flesh and it came back just for you. If that's you, the altar is open. If you've come today and you needed to be reminded that he's the thing, he's the one, the only one that we've been waiting for, that none of else of it matters, not our jobs, not our titles, not our positions, not our family history, not our bank accounts, none of it matters. He is the one for whom we've been waiting. And God, if there's somebody here who on this Christmas Eve needs to become a part of the household of faith, the doors of the church of Lomax are open wide. All you gotta do is come and walk through them and will receive you. God, this is my prayer on this Christmas Eve. It's in Jesus' name I pray that the people of God say, amen. As the choir plays softly, is there one that needs to come this morning? Don't worry about all these folks who are dressed up in their Christmas finery. This ain't about that. This is about your relationship. If you need to come to the altar today for whatever reason, the altar is open for you to come and receive the best gift there is. If you just need to come and pray this morning, the, the altar is open for you. And if you want to receive membership, the altar is open. Won't you come as you are led by the Lord? Is there one? Is there one that would come this morning? Is there one? Jesus Christ is Lord. I see you coming from the balcony. Just come on, we'll wait.
we continue in worship, we are going to transition from the fourth Sunday in Advent to Christmas Eve. And so we're going to invite our deaconess to come and prepare the altar as Brother Todd Pincham plays A Holy Night. Also, I want to just um, give a special thank you to Brother Fred Clark Jr. for blessing us this morning. What he doesn't know is that earlier in the Advent season when we were preparing, it was in my spirit to see whether he and his sister could both be a part of our musical service, but I assumed that they would be in high demand wherever they are, and so I left you alone, and look what God did, amen? We thank you for using your gifts this morning. At this time, we're going to invite Sister Maxine Campbell to come with our children for our children's selections.
so glad it's Christmas All the tinsels in life And the presents are not But the real gift is you Happy birthday Jesus I'm so glad it's Christmas All the carols and bells Make the holiday swell And it's all about you Happy birthday Jesus Jesus I love you birthday Jesus I'm so glad it's Christmas all the carols and bells make the holiday swell and it's all about you happy birthday Jesus Jesus, I love you. Happy birthday, Jesus. I'm so glad it's
Now we will begin our reading for Christmas Eve. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Merry Christmas, one and all. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them the light has shined. Four Sundays ago, we began our journey from darkness to light. Today, as we light the Christ candle, we celebrate that the light has come into the world in Jesus Christ. We can finally sing, joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men and women their songs employ. For us, it seemed like four long weeks before we could celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Imagine those who walked in darkness for centuries as they waited for the Messiah to come. However, as you all should know, anything good is worth waiting for. Somebody should say amen. amen. For the best thing that ever was, Jesus Christ, has been worth waiting for over the past four weeks. Even for those who waited centuries for the Messiah to come, Jesus was definitely worth waiting for. Amen. Jesus, the light of the world, he has truly come. Today we join in the chorus of angels and with our young children who praised God for the birth of Jesus Christ, exclaiming, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favored. The coming of Jesus demands our highest praise. The coming of Jesus should be far more exciting to us than the best gift under the Christmas tree. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus is the best thing that ever was or that will ever be. If you believe that, say amen. amen. The coming of Jesus can barely be expressed in human language. Christ's coming means that we no longer need to be separated for, from God by sin. If we would accept the gift of salvation available in Jesus Christ, Christ's coming means that God so loved us yeah. and the world yeah. that God chose to leave glory, to leave glory, yeah. to dwell down here in sin among us. Christ's coming means that Christ will come again to take us to the place he has prepared for us. How long will you experience any joy and or benefit from the gifts that you will unwrap today? Do you even remember what gifts you received last Christmas? Did they ever do anything consequential for you, like saving your soul soothing your fears and or securing your future. But today, we remember the gift of all gifts, Jesus Christ. Somebody say, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He is the gift yeah. that is remembered and celebrated over 2,000 years after he first came. Jesus Christ has value and benefit that is unquantifiable. Only Jesus can save our soul, soothe our fears, and secure our future. Why? Because he is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the bright and morning star, the lily of the valley, and the great I am. And so today, on this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ, and remember that he is coming back again, we sing with uplifted voices, he rules the world with truth and grace, and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love and wonders of his love. 
Yes, and wonders, wonders of his love. Joy to the world. The, the Lord is definitely worth the wait. Amen. Hear ye the words of the Lord found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth into Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth 
and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Next time you're riding down the road in your car, sing this song to the Lord. You'll get where you're going much faster. Let us. Come, let us adore you. Kneel down before him. Worship and adore him. Worship and adore him. Come. Come. Let us. Come, let us adore you. Kneel down before Kneel him. Kneel down before you. Worship and. Worship and adore him. Emmanuel. 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 Come on, say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The Lord is with us. Emmanuel. He's right there by your side. Emmanuel. And you don't have to worry, my friend. We worship you. We worship you. How many know when praises go up, blessings we come down? I dare you to give God some praise even in the midst of a trial. Let us. Come, let us adore you. No matter, no matter, no matter, no matter what's going on in your life, you've got to learn how to give God a sacrifice of praise. Oh, I know you know the song by now. Let us adore him. Come, let us adore you. Kneel down before him. Down before him. Worship and. Come on, say Emmanuel. Emmanuel. I like that. Emmanuel. He's my redeemer, he is my savior. And you don't have to worry, my friend. Come on, help me say, Emmanuel. The Lord is with us. And he's right there by your side. And you don't have to worry, my friend. Come on, help me say, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Lord is with us. Emmanuel. And he's right there by your side. Emmanuel. And you don't have to worry, my friend. Emmanuel. Come on, help me say, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. The Lord is with us. And he's right there by your side. Emmanuel. And you don't have to worry, my friend. Emmanuel. We. Emmanuel. 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 And you don't have to worry, my friend. Emmanuel. We worship. 
worship you. Okay. And he's right there by your side. And you don't have to worry, my friend. Come on, help me say, Emmanuel. The Lord is with us. And he's right there by your side. And you don't have to worry, my friend. We worship you. We worship you. The great I am. We worship you. We worship you. As we continue in worship, our second scripture reading can be found in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Amen. could stop the fulfillment of God's salvation plan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
our Christ was born. Hallelujah. On this Christmas, this Christmas morn, we're going to worship, we'll honor, and sing praises unto Him. Sing hallelujah. From over 42 generations Would it come to save all nations The Savior of the world His name would be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. Ha Hallelujah. Our Christ. Sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This Christmas morn, we're going to worship. We're going to honor, we'll sing praises unto him. Sing hallelujah to our king. Hallelujah. Our Christ, Christ is born. Sing hallelujah on this Christmas morn. We're going to worship, we're going to honor, we'll sing praises unto Him. We're going to, we're going to honor, we're going to sing praises unto Him. We're going to, we're going to worship. We're going to honor, sing praises unto Him. Hallelujah to our King. Our third and final scripture reading comes from Luke 2, 15 through 20. Luke 2, 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go into Bethlehem and see uh, this thing that has taken place which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At this time, we would invite you to stand as we sing Joy to the World, which will be our closing hymn for today.
While you remain standing, can we give the choir and the musicians a standing ovation today for all the hard work? Amen, amen. You may be seated. What a wonderful worship experience this has been. As we prepare to close out, First, I want to ask you to make sure that you keep Reverend Polite in your prayers, who was ill and was not able to be with us in worship today. Also, we want to just thank first our um, lay council and our leaders board for last Sunday's reception and fellowship that we had after the morning worship service. Can we give them a hand? And we also want to thank our senior ministry, um, Sister Cox, and especially Sister Lillian Jones, for the wonderful, wonderful senior fellowship luncheon that we had on Wednesday. Can we give God praise for that? Now, we have one thing that we need to do before we dismiss. And I'm going to ask if Reverend Tina would join me down here so that we can do this very quickly. We have one among us who has been a part of our family for some time. I'm gonna ask if Sister Adrian would come forward. Come, come forward, Adrian. We want to present this rolling bag to Adrian from the Lomax Church family. 
but it's also filled with some items that were collected by our missionary society under the leadership of Sister Wilma Newby. And there are some other items in here, some clothing items from our women's ministry. And so we want to present this to you. We have some other things for you as well, but we just hope that you have a blessed and Merry Christmas, Adrian. Amen. Amen. Can I get a hug? receive our benediction and then we will I hear you in my ear sister Peter Bark <laughs> sister Peter Bark wants me to remind everyone that if you purchase poncetias um, the red ones correct yes. you can take those after the morning service if you did not purchase poncetias please do not take them amen <laughs> right. let me share the benediction with you I am bringing to you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Merry Christmas and God bless you all. Let us stand for our doxology. Thank you.